I'm Vera Carr, Vice President of the Smut Snatchers of the New Order. In the absence of our President, the Reverend Spikes, do hereby declare this meeting officially open. Now, we need to send out a communique from our Education Committee. Now, after the vicious, vicious things they said about us in the newspapers, we have decided to become more flexible on bilingual education. And we do indeed have a bilingual education program to submit to the Tuna schools. The difference is our program is one of moderation. It entails learning the following Spanish phrases. Habla usted inglés, which means, do you speak English? Cuánto, which means, how much? Donde puedo cambiar este cheque, which is, where can I cash this traveler's check? Por favor, envía me en batones para recoger mi equipaje which is, please send me a boy for my luggage. And the last one is, no, hey, pedido esto, which is, I didn't order this. Now, that's all the Spanish any red-blooded American ought to feel obligated to learn. <laughs> Let's see, the newspapers make fun of that. <laughs> well, they're still not here, so I'm going to forge ahead. We need to send out a snatch squad. <laughs> well, we do. <laughs> we need to send out a book snatching squad to the Tuna High School Library to check those dictionaries. Now, we have a new list of words which have been declared possibly offensive or misunderstandable to pre-college students. Those words are hot hooker, coke, clap, deflower, ball, knocker, and nuts. <laughs> <laughs> After much prayer and soul searching with the board, the committee has decided not to include the word snatch on this year's list. We know that some of you have very strong feelings about snatch. <laughs> but we simply cannot afford to change our language at this time. Oh, well, here again. I now officially turn this meeting over to our honorable president, the Reverend Spikes. <laughs> hey, folks, I'm so sorry, I'm so late, but let's get down to business. We need to send out a book snatching squad to the high school. Oh, 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 I already told them that. Well, but me, President Vera, sending out snatch orders. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Please don't. Okay, folks, we got a, we got a, a new communicator from our bilingual education. Oh, 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 I already told them that, too. Well, you just told them everything now, didn't you, Vera? Well, what did you expect me to do for 15 minutes while you weren't here, the Macarena? <laughs> Vera, I'm not going to get this power stolen. <laughs> <Vera, laughs> the the radio people are here. Well, so we are. <laughs> Hello, Warners. <laughs> fine, fine. How's that? Are we ready with the Buckner eulogy? Of course. Yes, we're ready with the judge. Book the eulogy artist. I tell you what, why don't you just set it off the map over there? And when you have you ready, just come with me. Oh, yeah. What's that? Oh, you're ready. No, oh, yes, of course I'm ready. I'm ready, of course. Okay. Are we live? This is the Reverend Spikes. I just want to say, I say, I just want to say a few words. A few words about a friend of mine and a friend of two. Roscoe Butler was a man who spent his whole life in service to his community, his country, and his lord. And we're sure when the roll is called up yonder, he'll be there. He was a judge who maintained all the sunshine, but always, I say always, let a smile be his umbrella. He always kept his sunny side up, and always saw the silver lining behind every cloud. A judge who, who took no wooden nickels, no blue <coughs> caution to the wind, but looked before he left and never got in over 
his head. No, he kept his head while all about them were losing theirs. And I'm blaming it on him. He kept a stiff upper lip and a nose to the weed. About this man we can truly say he was a one of a kind. A jolly good fellow which nobody can deny. He was all for one and one for all and to his own self true. And I can tell you this. He did it his way. A judge who remembered to let bygones be bygones and always, I say always, remembered the animal. About this man we can truly say he was the cream in tuna's coffee. He fought fire with fire and he kept the home fires burning. And when he couldn't stand the heat, he got out of the kitchen. He would walk that extra mile. He would walk it softly and carry a big stick. He was a pepper, a man's man, heard of the bear, ready to rise. He laid his cards at the table, got out at the river, brought in the sheaves. Hunger was his best pickle. With the devil to say, man. Hush you. <laughs> a judge who wouldn't fire because <laughs> all the whites of their eyes but whispered a happy little tune. Praise God and pass that ammunition, for he had not yet begun to fight. For never, ever, ever did I ever hear the man say die. He just did. A fine, upstanding civil servant who practiced what he preached, or put his best foot forward, and his money where his mouth was. And when the going got tough, he was gone. It is not easy to find the words to describe such a man. But I have done my best. We commend his soul to you, Lord. I, the Reverend Spikes, recommend him. Amen, Lord. Amen. <laughs> What's that on? Yeah. <laughs>